Massachusetts, Massachusetts would have rejected the Constitution in 1788, as would New York have, as would Virginia have. In part, we manipulated it, but the pe people in power with wealth in the cities. However, by 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 our standards, the the Russian secession, the Russian annexation falls far short. The Crimean secession falls far short. It was exactly what you said. It was a snap um, decision. Ninety seven percent is not accurate. You're right. That's what the polls said. But ninety seven percent does not reflect the will of the Crimean people. However, both you and I believe, and I'm quite confident that we're correct that the that if it were put to a full fair vote. After serious deliberation, the overwhelming majority of the Crimean people would choose to secede from Ukraine and rejoin Russia. Plus, so Professor, if you look at the fact that the, the NATO back group overthrew the rest of the thing, that's so illegitimate that the two, I think, cancel each other out. Uh, what's your view on that? Well, um, yes, I think that's large. Well, I'll tell you what, come back and do two more minutes to finish the thought, and then we'll let the professor go and get into the other news. Stay with us. I want to finish that thought, Professor. Thank you. RobertBlecker.com. I'm Alex Jones. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet? The highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease. It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to big pharma. The fight against the new world order starts with you, and you can't stand against the machine if you're sick, tired, and obese. When you visit InfoWarsHealth.com, be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products and get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. This is Alex Jones for InfoWarsLife.com. The latest in preparedness is now here. An electrically stabilized colloidal silver solution that can be added to both your home cabinet and preparedness pack alike. Concentrated to 30 parts per million in what has been dubbed the Survival Silver Solution. The new InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver is the answer for you and your family. And it's entirely free of toxic artificial additives that are loaded into many products. The InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Silver is so powerful that it is concentrated into a two ounce bottle and is not recommended for extended continual use. This is not a low grade formula. We are working with one of the top laboratory manufacturers in the United States to bring you the best form of colloidal silver using electrical processes within a base of deionized water for your preparedness storage or your home kitchen. Purchase your bottle of InfoWarsLife.com Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver today and find other amazing supplements at InfoWarsLife.com. You are listening to an InfoWars.com frontline report. It's Alex Jones. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, we're here live. Back weeknights, 7 o'clock Central, InfoWars Nightly News. With myself, Jakari Jackson, Leanne McAdoo, 
David Knight, Darren McBreen, and many others like Kit Daniels. And we continue to go to the press conferences, ask the real questions like we did at the Fort Hood shooting press conference last night, an hour and a half north of Austin. We'll talk about that after our guest leaves here in a moment. Robert Blecker, again, is a constitutional lawyer, also worked as a federal uh, prosecutor, a special assistant attorney general. Uh, and he joins us. His new book is The Death of Punishment, Searching for Justice Among the Worst of the Worst. I want to get him on about that, just to talk about the kind of folks that are in these supermaxes. I've seen some documentaries, and, man, you talk about just savage, whacked-out murderers. A lot of them, I think, are just completely mentally ill. But at the same time, you would put a rabid pit bull to sleep that attacks people anytime it gets around them. I see the whole point when everybody knows that they're a murderer, it's, it's, but, but we'll have that discussion another time. I'm already going back over old ground. Finishing up with the issue of how the West and NATO and EU came in, spent $5 billion, the State Department admits, basically overthrew the elected government, who nobody's saying were angels, but overthrew it, took most of the country, put in actual neo-Nazis that march around heiling Hitler. I mean, this is like a Twilight Zone episode. So juxtapose American values. How does Obama and the State Department get away with lionizing uh, the Ukrainian leadership? Because I know there's a lot of good Ukrainians don't like the government was there and, and don't like the Russian influence. I get that. But this is so over the top from researching the players. I'm pinching myself, Professor. Well, he, here's what I would do. I mean, if I were Obama, what I would do is, and, and probably through the Secretary of State, or if I had direct conversations with Putin, as he apparently is having, I would say, look, insofar as our constitutional values are at stake, here's really what we demand. Crimea should have a full and fair discussion. Crimea should have a convention that represents the people of Crimea, and then put it to a, a vote. And you're probably going to win it. Now, the next move is going to be about eastern Ukraine and western Ukraine and whether they can split. Because I have very little doubt that Putin and Russia has its eyes on eastern Ukraine and see whether it can join Russia, whether they want to. And there the question is whether the Ukrainian people really are legitimately a coherent people or whether they conceive of themselves as distinct societies. And the troubling question is, if you put that to a full and fair discussion through elected representatives through the West and the Eastern Ukraine, would A, the people of Ukraine considered as one people vote to split apart? Remember, Czechoslovakia split into the Czech Republic and Slovakia, and, and, and nobody's quarreling with that legitimate split into two republics. So the deep issue is really going to be, the deep constitutional issue that implicates our values is, will, they, will we all put it to a full and fair vote, and will we allow Eastern Ukraine to separately vote from Western Ukraine as to whether they separate? And if Western Ukraine says we want one nation and Eastern Ukraine says we want to join Russia, then what, you, what do you do? And so what it may all boil down to is what Thucydides brilliantly described in the Melian debates in the Peloponnesian Wars 27 centuries ago, when the poor little island of Melos just asked to remain independent and be kept out of the war between Athens and Sparta, and Athens gave them two choices, which was either submit or die. And the Melians complained and said that was unjust. And the Athenian representatives replied, justice depends upon the equality of power to compel. The strong do what they can, the weak accept what they must. And that's maybe what it all comes down to. That's right. Political power grows out of a barrel of a gun. Yep. And that's why the state wants the monopoly of force. And that's why I obsess over guns all day is because they're the canary in the coal mine. Also, free speech is the canary in the coal mine. And we're seeing more and more moves to block religious freedom, uh, all sorts of freedom in this country. We're seeing moves in England to ban uh, questioning man-made global warming. I see the West. Professor, last question. Do you see the West? I certainly see it undoubtedly degenerating on many fronts into an authoritarianism. And uh, A, do you agree with that? And B, can we reverse that? <laughs> B is yes, we can reverse it. Um, I don't think it's I don't think it's uniformly degenerating. I think there are pockets of real problems, and it's and and, and it, authoritarian. I mean, I have a real problem, for example, with the federal overreach into the criminal justice system. The the essence of state sovereignty was from the very beginning the right to define, detect, prosecute, and punish crime as each state sees fit. 
The federal government has used the limited federal criminal power and is just occupying the field. You know, if we if we talk, and I assume we will have a follow up. We talk about the Boston Marathon bomber, who I would like to see executed. Nevertheless, he really committed mass murder in this on the state level. And if Massachusetts chooses not to have the death penalty, well, that's Massachusetts' right. So I'm deeply conflicted because on the one hand, I want him killed. On the other hand, I don't I don't quite see the constitutional right to do it. So to directly answer your question, I mean, yes, I think we, I think we have serious problems. I think we've lost sight of the common good. That is to say, in 1788, whatever they whatever their differences were, and they were profound politically, the Federalists versus the Anti-Federalists, they fundamentally embraced the notion of the common good. And right now, it seems to me that, that it's much more about private greed than it is about the common good. Too many people trying to grab for power, too many people trying to feather their own nests. So I do see that, that the system is becoming corrupted by, by selfishness. I do not think it's irreversible. I have deep faith in, in constitutional values. And, and, and the last thing I would say is that even though I uh, d declared as the, in real politic, as, as you do, that, that power grows out of the barrel of a gun, the fact is power is also restrained in certain res key respects within the military, within the police. It's restrained by constitutionalism. Oh, I agree. And, and, and it's also restrained, as you said, by the establishment itself and elites that in many cases have gotten there by hard work to keep checks and balances to protect their progeny. And it, it, it's very unwise, even for a corrupt establishment, to get rid of the checks and balances and it always ends up biting them in the butt if they do it. So I challenge the establishment itself, which is very diverse, to really try to reverse this authoritarian move because they're not in control uh, of this genie that they're releasing out of the bottle. You know, I forgot who it was who said it, but, but if you really want to understand your own politics, someone once said, probe deeply and ask yourself if you had only two choices, which was to, to live in an anarchy or to live under a tyranny, which would you prefer? And, and of course, neither one of us and none of us want either a tyranny or an anarchy. But for me, and I'm sure for you, if I had to have one or the other, I'd prefer anarchy to tyranny. That's right. And, and, and that's really ultimately what it comes down to. Are we fundamentally about liberty or are we fundamentally about power? Are we fundamentally about freedom or are we fundamentally about control? You are fundamentally about freedom. I am fundamentally about freedom. We may have different visions, and our politics are by far uh, are not by any means identical. But ultimately, what we have in common is that we prefer liberty to control. Absolutely. All right, Professor. Look forward to having you back on as soon as you want to come back on in the next few weeks about the death penalty. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Well, that was a good interview. Very informative. Um, and again, I'm not going to get into debates about the Boston bombing and how the brother was funded by the CIA and stuff. Um, you know, there's compelling evidence from the perspective that these guys were set up as patsies, bare minimum. Uh, and then that's why he says there's compelling evidence, you know, he was involved. I know that the survivor is saying he was set up and is pleading not guilty. Uh, but that's a further debate. And we'll bring that up next time he's on uh, and get into those issues. And we're going to have reporters at the second, um, you know, well, the first anniversary, but um, at the uh, new Boston Marathon uh, after last year. We're going to be there this year. Uh, covering that. I want to give you my review of the film Noah, and then I want to open the phones up just for a little spectrum of calls from people at Fort Hood. Fort Hood is a giant military base, the biggest in the world, arguably. There's one Russian one they say maybe bigger. It definitely has more personnel than any other military base in the world. I know we have a ton of listeners at Fort Hood listening on the internet uh, and also on AM radio. So, I'd like to open the phones up for people at Fort Hood. I think this was a real shooting. The guy was on drugs, uh, government prescribed drugs, that caused this, just like in almost every other case. I say almost every other. I can't think of cases, and I did research this morning and couldn't find them where people weren't on these drugs. And, and, and so I want to hear from folks at the Fort Hood military base. And to get your take on it, it's 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. And if you're scrambling to get a pen to write that down, if you're at Fort Hood, 800-259-9231. You know, I, I, we did play a clip off the news, uh, somebody that uploaded to YouTube, of shelter in place, do not leave your homes, when this guy was shooting people yesterday evening. In front of a bunch of witnesses, it looks pretty open and shut. Um... Again, they're not out of the gates trying to blame the Second Amendment and stuff. So, 
you know when it's scripted and staged because it's just all lined up and they're ready to go, like Sandy Hook and Aurora. And then the same players pop up, the same same actors, the same garbage. And it's just so over the top, I don't know how to respond to it. But maybe I'm wrong. If you're at the base and disagree with me, or you've got...